billion shillings in the education sector, which translates to 5.3% of our GDP, 27% of our budget. Kenyan people must get a return on this investment. And one of the returns that we must get as Kenyan people is that all our children must transit from class eight to form one. Government has already paid 22,224 for each of the 1,035,000 children who sat for KCP. So, there is no way we shall accept the 22,000 shillings to just disappear because our children are not in school. It will not happen. And it cannot happen. And that is why we must make sure that whatever it is that we must do, it has to be done. I thank my colleagues and brothers in the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government. More so, our assistant chiefs and our chiefs. That is where the rubber meets the road. And now, we are going to put primary responsibility, I'm calling it primary responsibility, to the head teachers of our primary schools to make sure that all our children are in secondary schools. There's an issue that we have been espousing, which we should get rid of, because that has also hampered transition. And we were discussing with the peers and we were saying it's possible to actually address that through the law. And that's the question of a demand for levies, a demand for lunch funds from parents by mm -hmm. head teachers. You know we are struggling with poor children. You know, we are struggling with people who are steeped in poverty. Why are we asking for lunch money from parents? So I would want our police officers also, once they hear that somebody is asking for lunch, to go for that teacher. Go for that teacher. You heard the deputy president say that very well yesterday. We do not want lunch, lunch funds, or fees for lunch to deny a child secondary school education. We should not allow this issue of teenage labor to happen. It happens in our transport uh, system, it happens at our beaches. And then there's also an issue of access which has been talked about here. We have only, I think, 97 public primary schools. When you look at the secondary schools, which are uh, primary schools, which are private, there are more than 600. That's also a problem. We don't have access to primary, public primary schools in our areas. So we want to request the government to look at that very seriously, so that we have at least access at every you know, near walking distance from where the child goes to school to where the child lives. Now you have to be good at something or the other. We want a child to be known that, you know, children who have been able to come up from this school have been able to come up with mean grades, but at the same time, they're some of the best footballers. A child who has been able to come up from this place has come up with a certain mean grade, but they are also be able to come up as some of the best, you know, in, in anything vocational. So it is a challenge that we wish to give to um, the various schools that are there. And, um, you know, food for thought. Mr. Bellius, you have a lot of work to do. That lady, Madam Ogut, donated a social hall for the school, which we subdivided into classrooms to accommodate secondary school students. Secondary school, we don't have a single class for secondary school. These are serious challenges that we have in Kisauni. The little money that we are being allocated by the national government, 100 million, out of that 30% is supposed to support bursary for the needy students. 70 million is not enough for me to do infrastructure development in Kisauni. It is so sad 
that we have an entire ward in Kisauni called the Junda. We have one primary school. One. A ward with over 50,000 people. 